Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Today, my beloved, is the first Sunday in the Lent or the 40 days period of fasting. Today is the start day of the 40 days of fasting. Last week was the preparation week, preparation week. Some people think it is extra because cops like to fast, but this is not the case. The church added this week, the week of preparation, and instead of the Saturdays that we don't usually abstain from food during the 40 days. So they take, and instead of those Saturdays, the first week to be fasted with the 40 days. But today is the beginning of the 40 day fast. The same 40 days that our Lord fasted on our behalf. Our Lord put those 40 days fast for us. And he didn't order us to fast without fasting them. But he fasted first on our behalf in order to learn, in order to do like him, in order to fast like him. The period of fasting, we all feel it. During those days, we feel that we are so close to God. We feel that we taste the heavenly life. We taste the life that we're going to live in heaven. But we start to taste it from today. Why we feel that? Because in the period of fasting, there is more time for prayers. There is more time for worship. There is more time for service. In those days, the need of the body is limited. The need of the body is limited. Any kind of food, even it is a plate of salad, it is enough just to sustain the body. You feel that when you come, for example, for the late liturgies, even the young kids, when they come to the late liturgies from four to seven, as if the child doesn't want to go home, as if the child wants to attend every single late liturgy, the child. Why? Because he feels more than us the heavenly life. He's enjoying being close to God, near God. He feel, and all of us feel, that we are walking in, this, in those days with God himself, hand in hand. And the reason we all feel that is that when any one of us put in his heart and his mind that he wants to fast and start fasting, he receives a special grace from Christ himself. 
he received a grace, a blessing from God himself. The same power, the same power that Christ had during those 40 days, we receive them, we receive it in those 40 days. Bear in mind, our Lord fasted 40 days without food, without drink. How he did this is the same how we endure 40 days with minimum of food and drink. So we receive from God a special grace. And this special grace is the same that we're going to live with in eternity. The gift of eternal life. The gift of being in heaven. The church put for us the spirit of fasting to, the whole, to, the, to all congregation. Everyone, young and, and, and big. Ladies and gentlemen. Poor and rich. Everyone, the church say, please, fast with us. Why our mother, the church, wants us to fast? To answer the famous question. What is the aim of life? Why we are living on earth? Why we are here? We are living on earth, my beloved, anxious and looking forward to go to heaven. And this is the life that we taste during fast. As I said to you, what is, what is making you busy during fast? The body is taking the minimal. And your mind is not busy with food, drink, clothes, entertainment. You are not busy with anything. So you see that the person or the human being is living those days connected to God. People come to, to Abuna and say, Abuna, we, we feel in the fast that we are in joy, spiritual joy. And this is, my beloved, is the aim of our lives on earth. We are living on earth to taste, to taste the sweetness of heaven. So that when we depart from this earth, we will go and dwell in heaven. We experience that during the fasting period. But God want everyone to enjoy this every single day of his or her life. To enjoy the sweetness of heaven every day, even in the period that has no fast. God wants us to feel heaven, to taste heaven, and to taste how to be with him, close to him. So our lives here on earth has a target, which is to taste heaven. And when you taste heaven, you are looking forward. When is the day that I'm going to go to heaven?
We put in our minds that those days we're going to spend building for ourselves a treasure or building for ourselves a house, a mansion in heaven. That's why our Lord once said, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by, righteous, by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, means when you depart this world, they may receive you into everlasting home. Everlasting home. This everlasting home is what you're doing and what you labor for during your days on earth. But be careful, he say, that may receive you into everlasting home. That means there is people who are going to be received and people who are going to be denied. People who are going to be received, welcome, and people who are going to be denied. So the Lord is telling us in those period of fasting, come on, do your best. My child, do your best to be accepted, to be received, to be welcomed into the everlasting home. And this is our aim and target, living this life on earth. That's why St. Paul told us and said, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, destroyed, we have a building from God. We have a building from God. We are here on this earth as strangers. We are here on earth in a journey. This journey, its aim, its target is to prepare ourselves to go and live in this everlasting home. To taste the kingdom of God here on earth. To be anxious to go to heaven, to love the kingdom of God, to feel joy that we have a place in heaven. God is saying to everyone, come on, do your best. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be near you. My hand is working with you in those days of your life. Come on. Work hard so you will have a place in heaven. We are not living here, my beloved, and our lives are under the control of our minds, our plans, our hopes. One would say, I live to do this and this and this, to achieve this and this and this, and to have and acquire and own this and this and this. No, my beloved, you are not living for this or for that. And this is what the church wants to tell us during this fasting period. We are living here on earth to gather a treasure for us to be in heaven. To gather a treasure for us to be in heaven. And to build a house for us in heaven. This is the core, the center 
of our lives. As you taste it in the fasting period of time, God is telling us, I want all your days to taste heaven while you are on earth. Our teacher St. Paul says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The foundation is Jesus Christ. So what we should do, St. Paul, he said, let each one take heed how he builds on it. Our job, our work on this earth to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Build what? A treasure, a home. Here on earth? No, in heaven. So the treasure, I mean the foundation is Jesus Christ. No one can lay any other foundation. Because in heaven, there is Jesus Christ. St. Paul continues to say, people will build on this foundation homes made of stones. One will build a house or home from gold or silver or precious stones. Others will build houses made of wood. Others will make houses of straw or hay. Whatever you're going to build, this is what we're going to live in. But if you build from hay or straws, and it is collapsing, that's your problem. So be careful what you are building. From what material you are building. Our aim and target in life is to build our home in heaven. Just like when uh, someone go out of his country to another country to be a stranger. Why you are going away from your country? I'm collecting some money to build a house for me and my family back in home. So that when I come home back, I may live in this house with my family and I don't need for anything. This is exactly what we are doing here on earth. We are strangers. We are heavenly creatures, but living on earth. Our home is heaven, and we're going to go back. So when we go back, where is our home? What did we do? What did we build? That is the question. If you don't build here on earth a home for you in heaven, when you go there, where are you going to stay? One would say, what you said now, Abuna, is so comforting. So, every one of us, during this fasting period, we're going to stay home. We're going to pray a lot. We're going to read the Bible. 
and we're going to leave our jobs. Or better to go to a monastery and sleep. Or some people may understand the words of our Lord here in this gospel today wrongly. When he said, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your, father, your heavenly Father feeds them. Very good. So we're going to be like the birds of the heaven and we're going to stay home doing nothing and God will feed us. This is not what our Lord aim. This is not the meaning of, of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the proof is, our Lord said, look at the birds of the air. Did you ever in your life saw a bird in her nest doing nothing? On the contrary, every single moment of her day, she's flying here and there, looking for food. She's searching for food. So she's working. She's doing something. She's not sleeping. The birds barely sleep a few hours and then they wake up and go flying everywhere, search for food. We're supposed to be the same. We are not supposed to be lazy in our houses or homes. Our Lord is telling us, please, do your best. Do your best. Work. Labor. But he is warning us that during this labor, you will be worried. Did you ever see a bird going in the morning? flying and searching for its, its food and saying in her mind, shall I find any food today? Who's going to bring food to me today? No. She's doing her part and God is doing his part. You search, I'm going to bring food to you. You work as a human being, you work, I'm going to give you what you need. That's God's part. I'll tell you one thing. One of the main components of life for a human being to live is air, right? Any human being cannot, cannot live without air more than three minutes. That is the utmost. No one. Did you ever wake up in the morning saying, is there any enough air today? Of course not. Why? Because He is giving us all what should sustain us in our lives. We are not supposed to be worried. You know why? Because worrisome will make you fail. To be worried will make you lose the gifts of God to you. You're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it. You're not going to enjoy it. Some people come to ask, why either during the fast or in, in, in other days, why we are not feeling heaven? Why we are not feeling that we are with God and God with us? 
The answer is because you are worried. You are so worried about many, many things in your life. You are worried and you don't trust God enough. My beloved, the problem is not in our jobs and our work and our labor in this life. Even the, the Holy Bible in the book of Proverbs, it says that the sleep of the one who is laboring is so sweet. The one who is laboring, the one who is working hard. We all felt that before. When your day is so busy and you work so hard, when you go to put your head on the pillow, you sleep like a baby. When you are tired, you sleep well. When you are sleeping and you come to sleep again, you are so annoyed and tired. So why you are not sleeping at night sometimes? Not because we are tired. Not because we, are, we spend the day in work and labor. No. But we, because we are worried. We are thinking too much about tomorrow and the future and the food and the drinks and the, and the clothes and, and what we're going to do, the house, the car, the job. Literally, we are killing ourselves. By the way, this is... This is the plan of God to every human being, is to work and labor. Do you think that Adam was in the Garden of Eden, sleeping all the day? Did God create him to just relax? I'm going to bring you Eve, and I'm going to feed you. I'm going to give you water, and you just be there. No. Go back and read Genesis 2.15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Adam was a farmer. Adam labored in the Garden of Eden. God does not want us to be lazy. God wants us to do our part. And he is doing his part. For sure. You just need to trust God. You just need to trust God. Adam was not worried in the Garden of Eden before the fall. Although he was working a lot. Jesus Christ, our Lord himself. Some people think wrongly that our Lord was born from the Virgin and he lived uh, St. Joseph took care of, of, of him and his mother, and he has, n he has you know, no work to do. And after St. Joseph uh, um, uh, reposed, so um, he went with his uh, disciples and the Marys or the, the, the ladies that went with him, they spend money on him. So he never work. From where did this idea come to you? Maybe you, you read the, the Bible with no concentration. 
if you read the whole four Gospels, you're going to find Matthew and Luke is describing our Lord Jesus Christ that He is the son of the carpenter. Or the people said that. But in St. Mark Gospel, our patron saint, he is the only one who said about Jesus, the carpenter. What does this mean? No, St. Joseph was a carpenter. And Jesus was a carpenter too. St. Joseph reposed when Jesus was 17 years old. From the age of 17 years old, Jesus took over the work of carpentry. And he became a carpenter until the year, I mean, until 30 years of his age. From 17 to 30, he was working as a carpenter. Taking care of his mother and his house. Our Lord was not lazy. Our Lord was not sitting at home doing nothing. He was working and working hard. Until the age of 30, he, he became, I mean, he started his ministry. My beloved, St. Paul was so obvious and so blunt, if I can say. When he said, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. This is a biblical commandment. St. Peter said, giving all diligence. That is what the church wants us to understand during the fasting time. Work as hard as you wish. Or it is required from you. But do not worry about anything. Work, labor, do your best, achieve, but don't worry. That's why, my beloved, I end saying there is no contradiction between the work of any human being and the tasting of, of, of the heaven or the kingdom of God in his life. When you do your part, God will do his part. Please do not worry about anything in your life. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.